Good morning. Good morning. St. Anthony of Padua's parish family welcomes all who have gathered for our liturgy for the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. You are kindly requested at this time to turn off all electronic devices, including cell phones. At Cana in Galilee, Jesus performed the first of his signs, revealing his glory to his disciples and later to the nations. He has revealed as well the manifestation of the Spirit who distributes different gifts as he chooses. This liturgy is being offered for the happy repose of the soul of Grace Oini. The altar flowers are in honor of the 101st birthday of Dorothy Corriere. We begin our prayer by standing and joining in singing number 616, Praise to the Lord the Almighty, number 616. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good A little cold out there? <laughs> Today I was listening to the readings, and the line that struck me in the first reading, it says, as a bridegroom loves his bride, so does our God love you. And that you is all of us. And so we ask today as we enter into these sacred mysteries, our hearts can be open to receive the love of God to strengthen us in our spiritual journey. So my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our own sins and ask the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. We are sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. The readings can be found at number 1097, number 1097. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The words to the antiphon of the psalm are, Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations announce his salvation day after day tell his glory among all the lands among all people his wondrous deeds proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Glory to the Lord, you families of nations. Give the Lord glory and praise. Give 
to the Lord the glory to his name proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations Just worship the Lord in holy attire Tremble before him all the earth Say among the nations the Lord is king He governs his people with equity Proclaim his marvelous deeds To all the nations A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom, to another the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another mighty deeds, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another varieties of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now 
and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it come from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this at the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the wedding feast of Cana is a story that's familiar to most of us. You know, every time I read that story, it reminds me of the wedding receptions we used to have when I was young. You know, there was no sit-down dinners or no assigned tables back then. There were steamers filled with rigatoni and fried chicken. And there was potato, bowls of potato salad and macaroni salad, and there were cold cuts, sliced cheese, rolls and condiments, and for dessert, there were cookies, lots and lots of cookies that were baked by the family and friends of the bride. You know, all set out on a table, buffet style, and everybody came up and got whatever they wanted. All, all, it was much more informal than weddings are now, the ones that I've, used, that I've seen recently. But, but there were still certain rituals that were always practiced. The, there was the toast still given by the best man. The bar would be shut down during the bridal dance. And everyone would put a dollar in the can for a shot of whiskey, then dance with the bride, and that money would be used for the newlyweds' honeymoon, or at least for part of it. And of course, at some point or another, you had to play the chicken dance. But, but even though it was supposed to be by invitation only, there was always a handful of young guys that would show up, usually after the dinner, and use this reception venue as their Saturday night out. And you know, really nobody minded. In fact, they kind of expected it. Um, and they didn't, as long as they didn't cause any trouble, they really didn't care. As a matter of fact, they often added to the conviviality of the reception. And I think weddings in Jesus' day were, were something akin to that. You know, they didn't have to send out invitations. They just had to announce the day of the wedding. And it was assumed that anyone in the community was welcome to come. You know, Cana, it was just a few miles from Nazareth, so the wedding family was probably acquainted with Mary, and so it could be expected that she would come to the feast. And Jesus, too, because he was her son, and the son of the carpenter. But the towns where Jesus' followers were, they were lakeside villages. They were a little bit farther away. You know, I, I read one time that the reason why they ran out of wine was because of all these fishermen that came along with Jesus. And, and, those, and, they were, and those fishermen, they knew how to party. You know, we, we have to ask ourselves why John included this story of the wedding feast in his gospel and why he made it the first of Jesus' signs in his public ministry. After all, it was just a wine at, just a, wine at a party, something not really essential for the kingdom of God. Even Jesus himself, when Mary informed him that they were out of wine, even Jesus himself said, how does, that have anything, how does that have anything to do with me? He had more important things to do. He had more important things to do with his life other than providing wine for a wedding party. But, but maybe Mary was teaching him a lesson that day. Maybe she was telling him, I know you have important things to do with your life but the way you go about doing them is by being attentive to the small and seemingly unimportant things that come day, by, day to day. Then she tells the servers, do whatever he tells you. Oh, if only we could be so attentive to Mary's voice as the servers were in today's story. But of course, there's more to today's story than that. John was setting the stage for his gospel. The story of the wedding feast of Cana is, is full of symbolism. For example, 
the containers that Jesus had filled with water were containers that were reserved for the various purification rites and rituals of the law. And John was telling us that these rites and rituals were being superseded by the new covenant of God's love that Jesus was bringing to earth. He used this story of changing the water into wine to reveal the power of Jesus and to show from the very start of his public life that Jesus was the anointed one of God. And he tells us how this miracle helped his disciples to start to believe in him as something more than a new and exciting teacher. But maybe it was the theme of the wedding itself that inspired John to make this the opening sign of Jesus' ministry. Didn't we hear in our first reading today, the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And throughout our history, we find so many different references to Christ as the groom and his church as his bride. For with his incarnation, Jesus made a marriage between God and man. And it wasn't just a superficial relationship. He sealed this covenant of love with his passion and death. For isn't that how we know our love is genuine? It, it's easy, it's easy to fall in love. But, but it's much more difficult to give something up of yourself for the sake of your beloved. And that's just what Jesus did. He not only gave up his life, he gave up his very divinity so that he could be one with us and that we could share in his divinity through his resurrection. But isn't that what a good marriage does? In a good marriage, each partner gives something up for the other. But instead of losing something, they gain something from one another. Perhaps when, when we speak of our spouses, we often use phrases like our better half or our other half, and it's true, isn't it? Each partner complements the other. Sometimes one partner is weaker in this area and the other one is stronger. And in another area, the other partner is stronger and the other weaker. But the two together, when they come together, they both become stronger. And out of that love relationship, is a new life is created. Children are born. You know, a genuine love relationship, as imperfect, as, imperfect as they may, on the, in, may be on this earth, is in some way a reflection of that perfect love relationship between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But this invitation to the wedding feast goes beyond just married couples. It goes out to all the church in the broadest sense of the word church. He gives of himself to all of us, and we in turn are called to give all of ourselves to him. I think that's what Paul was trying to get at in telling us in our second reading today. You know, each, of us, each of us has been gifted with our own unique gift and talents, and we're invited to bring these gifts to our wedding feast and offer them up for the service of all. But too often in our sinfulness, we use them only for our own ends, for our own advancement and for our own benefit and not for the benefit of all. And sometimes we're afraid to bring them to the table for fear that we will lose something of ourselves. We're afraid we might seem strange afraid that our gifts are too small, too paltry, and will be rejected. And it's true, it can't be denied. There will be times that we experience persecution and disappointment, suffering. But just as in a good marriage, if we can stay true and faithful to the hard times, the bonds of love that we share with Jesus and with one another will be, made, will be strengthened and will be sealed and we, in truth, will, become, will be in the process of becoming one with Jesus. Blessed are they who are called to the wedding feast of the Lamb. These are the words that come towards the end of the book of Revelation after the time of trials and tribulation and the final victory is won. 
You know, but we can say these very same words today when we come here to church and celebrate this Eucharist. For truly, this here is the wedding feast of the Lamb. When Jesus renews his vow of love for his people and he makes present again that sacrifice of love that he made for us on Calvary. And how privileged and how blessed are we to be able to come and share in this heavenly wedding feast. So, so let us renew our own vow to use the talents that we have been given, whether they are great or small, for the benefit of all God's people, so that in time we can become one body, one spirit in Christ. I believe in one God, <clears throat> the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. <clears throat> For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and life of the world to come. Amen. With a willingness to do whatever he tells us, we turn to the Lord with our needs. That the Holy Father, the bishops, and all clergy may be blessed with the gift of faith, wisdom and prophecy, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For deeper unity among all Christians as they exercise the gifts given to many parts of the body of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that the witness of Americans who gather in Washington and other cities to march on behalf of the unborn may move our nation closer to restoring equal protection for those children, we pray to the Lord that the vision and the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. may inspire Christians to work for equality among all members of our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that, God, that God's people may listen closely to God as the Synod seeks to renew and deepen the mission of the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the people of the parish and all families, that our merciful Father may continue to bless us to keep us and to help us to grow together in love and in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may have the grace to accept the Lord's will and may quickly come to healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Grace Oyeni and our recently deceased, that they may share in the banquet of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions that we hold close to our hearts. Father, we, as we present our needs to you, fill us with the many gifts of your spirit that we may serve you and your people with strength and joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we offer our gifts to the Father, we join in singing number 930, Taste and See, number 930. and see, taste 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Creator of the world and source of all life. For you never, never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. 
And when is once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, <clears throat> we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Alfred our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Anthony, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. As we come forward to receive Jesus, we join in singing number 914, Lord, who at your first Eucharist, number 914.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So for the final blessing, I don't know if you've had the opportunity ever to watch The Chosen. It's a free app that you can get for your phone or your iPad or your computer, and you can project it onto your, your TV. It's a, a great series on the life of Jesus in a very modern contemporary form, faithful to the Gospels. Um, so uh, as we were listening to today's Gospel, there's a great scene on the, on the wedding feast of Cain. I think that's in season one, uh, I think episode four or five. So if you have not watched it, I encourage you to pursue The Chosen. If you have watched it, I encourage you to watch it again. Okay? Have a wonderful week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Defend, Defend us in battle. Be our, be our protection against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. With this being the end of the Christmas season, we invite all parishioners to take the poinsettias, both large and small, that are around the altar, tabernacle, and windows. We ask only that you please leave the plastic trays that are underneath. Renewed in faith, we go forth singing number 835, They'll Know We Are Christians. Number 835. Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. other we will walk hand in hand we will walk with each other we will walk hand in hand and together we'll spread the news that God is in our land and they'll know we are Christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are Christians by our